All right, Dan, thanks so much for being with us on the show today. Tell us about your background. How did you get started in marketing books in the first place? Well, I market not only books, but movies and everything you can think of. How did I get started? I'll have to give you the short version of this. Uh, actually, here's, what's interesting about my background is that I have absolutely no experience uh, as far, or I should say, education in, in marketing. I have none in, in computers or the internet or anything. In fact, I can hardly type. And, and I only say this because if you look at my track record, the results are, and I'm humble about this, but the results are pretty phenomenal. I mean, I have helped clients and I have been involved in projects that have brought in hundreds of millions of dollars. And, and the reason I think this is important for your listeners is because a lot of people think, well, the only, the only way you can do good uh, on the internet is, you know, if you've, you know, got a lot of computer skills or you have to be real techy or, uh, you know, you have to take a million marketing courses, and the reality is, is you don't. You just have to know how to do a few things really good. So the way I got started is that uh, literally when the, the Internet first, you know, came around, back in the days when uh, I'm, I'm sure a few people on, on your call today will remember this, they used to send out floppy disks, uh, AOL. And uh, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I opened up the email, I mean, sorry, the mailbox, and there was a floppy disk there. I didn't even have a computer to stick it in, and I had to go buy a computer and put it in there. I got online, and I just started, you know, experimenting uh, with, with things. Uh, and, uh, you know, I kind of taught myself how to program, taught myself how to uh, design and do a few things. And then I just, you know, read a lot and kind of stumbled my way through all of this. And, and here's the good news. The good news is you don't have to do it that way because you can find people uh, like me or, or yourself, Tom, and we've already been down the road and kind of stumbled and, and learned shortcuts to do things. And uh, so today it's a lot easier for people to learn how to do marketing. And it really doesn't have to be that hard. But ultimately, you know, this, this whole trip for me in marketing, uh, you know, was always one where I never wanted to spend much money. I always wanted to figure out how to do it uh, very affordably and ultimately it led to, some people call me the czar of zero because uh, many of the marketing strategies that I do and many of the ones that I teach actually cost no money. And so don't, don't you know, get under the illusion that the only way you can promote your book or your product or your service is by spending money. Uh, there are times to spend money, don't get me wrong, but there are generally always ways to do things at very low cost or absolutely zero uh, if, you, if you just you know, figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, that's so true. And the thing with business is, you know, it's not about how much money you make, like it's not about how many books you sell, or how much revenue you have, it's about how much profit you make, how much money you keep. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, and you know the thing is, like most of us, we just spend so much money trying these different marketing products or courses or services or you know autoresponder software or lead page software, all this stuff we spend money on, and at the end of the day, we're not really making much profit just because we're spending so much money. Oh, absolutely. And you know whether it's a product or if you're if you're writing a book, a lot of what you have to do early on is playing around with things like title. You know what titles should you put on your book or or uh, you know what should the uh, topic of your book be or the chapters in your book be and, th and this is whether you're doing a book that's fiction or if you're doing a how-to book or whatever it is it's the same and and what's really nice about the internet and in learning some marketing strategies that don't cost much is that you can ex you can you can do surveys and polls uh, you can use social media in order to figure out you know what the best title for a book is I, I think uh, one of the ones I know really well is, you know, the four hour work week. Uh, and, and the way they came up with that title uh, was basically by uh, doing a poll or, or, or surveying people on Twitter and uh, Facebook in order to figure out what title should this be. And I don't have to tell you that sometimes the title can make or break a book. Uh, some people probably know that I was the guy that did the marketing behind the secret and that was a uh, you know, a mega success. I mean, we literally brought in hundreds of millions of dollars in marketing uh, that movie and, and then later the book. And the name of it was a, a big part, uh, you know, simple name, but, you know, the secret. And so uh, you can use marketing strategies in order to help you to figure out how to, how to create product services and books as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. 
And that's a great point you made about the titles because I think a lot of authors or just people in general, we don't understand that there's so much more to marketing than like an advertisement and that your book title is marketing. Your book cover is marketing. Like, you know, you're, who you are as an author is marketing. Everything you do is marketing. Every time you respond to an email from a reader, that's marketing. Oh, and absolutely. It's, it's way more than just buying advertisements or getting a, an article in the Wall Street Journal or something like that. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. You know, there's a little tool, you know, and as we talk today, I'll try to share, you know, a tool from here, here, you know, here or there as we go through. But as you're thinking about titles and things that uh, you should uh, put on your book, uh, you often want to make sure that you get the domain name that matches uh, your, your book title as well. Uh, there's a tool, it's free, and everything I share with you today will be absolutely zero cost. Uh, but it's called Lean Domain Search. That's L E A N. So leandomainsearch.com. I absolutely love this tool. I use it all the time. You can go there, you enter in uh, a word or two, and it will help you to uh, not only discover an available domain, everything it shows you will be available. Uh, and it, it'll also show you what's available uh, uh, for certain social media usernames as well, because sometimes when you create the, a book, you want to have the domain, you want to make sure that you've got your Facebook username or your Twitter um, uh, username and things of that nature, and you can use this. But what I really like about it is that it also, you know, helps you to create the title uh, just by typing in one or two words of what your book is about and then it'll bring up literally hundreds and hundreds of things and it'll really help you a lot with that. The, the funny story about this is that uh, uh, when The Secret came to me, uh, you know, the very first uh, thing I asked them was, well, okay, what's the name of your, uh, uh, by the way, they started as a movie and then later it became a book. So I said, what's the name of your movie? They said the secret, and I'm going, oh gosh, this is going to be really hard to market because I did a quick search for the secret, and guess what our competition was? We had secret deodorant, and we had Victoria's Secret. They, they dominated the page, and I'm thinking, we're never going to be able to SEO this site well enough to get it up and beat out secret deodorant and Victoria's Secret. Uh, and, so I, and, and then not only that, they did not own the domain. TheSecret.com, they did not own it. It was owned by a mattress company they, that made mattresses. And this was, it was almost funny, but, uh, you know, they, they ended up putting the site over on, I think it was TheSecret.tv. But, but it, was, it made marketing hard because people would hear about the movie or the book, uh, they try to tell their friends about it. Oh gosh, this is really great! And just go check it out. And people would say, "Well, where is it?" And people would automatically say, "Oh, just go to thesecret.com." Well, it ended up that this mattress company was just getting hits like crazy. And I don't know if they sold mattresses or sold a lot more mattresses or not. But uh, it, it's crazy things like that that you have to think about when you're writing a book. So you, you uh, we ultimately were able to you know, break through all of that with some creative marketing strategies, but that's really important uh, how you name your book in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Well, I know at the beginning of this, this interview, you mentioned that there's only a few things you need to do uh, when it comes to marketing and do really well to make some good money. And my, one of my mentors, my favorite mentor is Jim Rohn, and he says, you know, there's only a half dozen things you really have to do well to be successful in any area of life. So what do you think in terms of marketing and especially marketing books for authors what do you think are those you know half dozen things that are, that are really important that you have to learn how to master? Okay, you absolutely have to master how to build a list. It's number one on, on the things that you need to do. And by building a list, basically it boils down to uh, uh, getting people to give you their email address, perhaps their name and email address. And so that immediately opens up uh, kind of a technology challenge for many people because you have to have what's known as an autoresponder and you can go to MailChimp or Constant Contact or uh, AWeber. There's lots of different choices out there. Uh, and so what you have to first do is find out, you know, which one you're going to use. Uh, there are many you can go to, but one I would really highly recommend if you want to do it uh, for free is one that's called Benchmark. Let me see if I can get the web address for that. Um, yeah, here we go. Uh, if you go to benchmark email, benchmarkemail.com forward slash free edition, and you have to spell free edition with a capital F 
and a capital E. In other words, you're capitalizing the words. We'll, I'll, get, I'll send the links over um, uh, after our call so you can yeah, we'll post maybe, the link show notes. Yeah, maybe post this. But benchmarkemail.com forward slash free edition. This is a really top quality uh, email list builder. And you'll love it when you get there because it says free for life. Okay, this is a company that provides really high-end services that they charge for, but they have a free-for-life version. Now, there's a catch here, and it's a, it's a small one, but you are not going to be able to go and upload a pre-existing list. Let's say you've got a hundred or a thousand names and emails that you've collected here and there, perhaps through another system or or however. You're not going to be able to upload into this system. Uh, Benchmark uh, wants to pre prevent people from uploading spam lists and things of that nature, but you can start with this one. You can put an opt-in box on your site and do all the things that a, a top quality uh, email list builder will allow you to do um, uh, using this, but you just can't upload into it. Other than that, it's incredible. You're going to get high delivery rates. Everything about it is good. So you've got to have that system. The next thing you got to think about, well, okay, I've got this autoresponder that uh, that I've opened up uh, and now I've got to figure out how to put an opt-in box someplace on a page so then immediately you need some some method to build a page or a site or something of that nature uh, and there's a lot of places you can go in order to do that a couple I'd recommend is uh, WordPress is great WordPress is a free uh, a platform you can download it and install it it doesn't cost anything or you can maybe the hosting company you're working with uh, has uh, this thing called Fantastico which allows you to one-click install things such as WordPress uh, so you can find a good hosting company one if you're looking for a hosting company that's free uh, you just absolutely can't be let me give you this one it's a it's called 24 7 Zilla 24/7 Zilla. Okay. Now 24/7 Zilla is free cloud hosting. And again, I'm not going to recommend anything to you that I don't use myself. So I every all of these I've, I either use them actively or I've kicked the tires and tested them or I have clients that uh, I've set up and using it. And everything that I recommend uh, will be premium quality. There aren't catches. You're not going to get on spam lists. You're not going to, uh, you know, have crazy uh, external banner ads where somebody's trying to promote something to your clientele. Nothing like that, all right? Uh, but anyway, 247zilla.com, they offer free cloud hosting. They have uh, uh, Fantastico, which I mentioned earlier, which is a simple one-click way to install WordPress, and you could set up a site that way. Another way you can set up a site really quick uh, is you can go... Uh, to a platform. This is actually a platform that I run and it's called everythinggenius.com forward slash network. So everythinggenius.com forward slash network. And what this is, is a site builder. There's no cost for the first level in this program and you can set up a really nice site there. And guess what? This is WordPress as well. I call it WordPress on steroids because it has a few extra bells and whistles that you wouldn't get from just a straight out a WordPress install. So this is going to give you a place, whether you use WordPress or EverythingGenius.com, it's going to give you a place to set up your site and you'll find out once you get these systems uh, up, there are simple ways to get the uh, opt-in box there so you can build your list. Now, and I'm going kind of quick and skimming the surface on this, but now you got to think, okay, I've got my autoresponder, I've got my website, and I've put my opt-in box there. Now you have to come up with what are you going to give to the visitor to compel them to give you, your, give you their email address. It's got to be something of great value, at least in their mind, uh, that makes it worth them handing over the goods. And the goods would be the visitor's email address. So you can come up with something like a, a downloadable. It can be a, 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 either a PDF or a white paper or Word doc. It can be an audio file. It can be a video. Uh, it could even be uh, free cookies. If you want to give away, not, let me reword that. If you wanted to give away cookies, let's say, you can go to a place called Zen Exclusives. Let me let me spell that for you. Z E N. C L U S I V E, Zenclusives. Now, Zenclusives is a place 
that will give you gift certificates that you can hand out to people. You could give out uh, $10 gift certificates for cookies like over at David's Cookies or you could give away, um, uh, you know, uh, gosh, what else do they have? They have a, a, a nature box that has like healthy snacks and things and what have you. But here's what's so interesting about Zinclusives. Some of the things that they have are certificates that actually cost zero. It's amazing. Cost zero. I could give out just hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of uh, cookie uh, certificates if I wanted to. Some of them you spend a couple of bucks and you can get you know restaurant coupons and things of that nature. But here's my point. You're coming up with something that you give the visitor in exchange for them opting in to, to the list. Now, now if you're going to give away a downloadable, the most important part of that downloadable is what you call it. It's not so much what it really is. It should be something good, but it's more important what you call it. In other words, the title. The title needs to be something where they go, gosh, I got to have that. In other words, it's so compelling that they're going to put in their email address and they're going to click the button. All right, and you can do a newsletter as well. Maybe the title of your newsletter, what you're going to email them every week or so, is just really compelling. And I'll give you a little psychology tip, tip as well. People will give you their email address more for something that's titled toward the negative than toward the positive. In other words, here's what I mean. If you say, here are the 10 mistakes that authors make, more people would sign up for that than if you said, here are 10 great ideas to help sell your next book. So if you word it toward the negative, the 10 worst things or, or, or 10 flubs that people make or that kind of thing, people are more interested in that and you'll get more opt-ins for that. So you name this thing something or you name your newsletter something or you give away some Zinclusive uh, freebies or you know maybe a mixture of that and people will opt into your list. All right, now what do you do? You've got people on your list, but you haven't made a dime. You haven't sold any books. What you have to do, and this is really the thrust of all marketing, is build a relationship. You will sell things to people if they know you, like you, and trust you. And the only way that's going to happen is if you can build that relationship, and you can start to do it through email. You can do it to a certain extent through social media, but you can really do it well through email. And I forget the statistics exactly, but roughly 94% of all products that are sold online, 94% are sold through email, meaning somebody got an email, they opened it up, and they purchased. What you have to realize is that the person getting the email, it wasn't the first email that they got. That's why spamming doesn't work really well. This is an email that's come to them after they've received many from you over time. They know you, trust you, like you, and boom, all of a sudden you send out an email and they click the button and they'll buy. That's where 94% of sales occur. That's you and I. Relationships. Yeah, it's all relationships. You and I are not Walmart. We're not Amazon. They have a different model. Over there, people, you know, just go. They, they have a credit card in hand and they buy. But uh, if you're trying to sell things off of your site or sell your book off of your site or even any place you're selling it, you need to build those relationships. You know, so so what we've talked about thus far, the the, the idea of, of building a list and everything, we're really talking about a funnel. And, and so the funnel really starts from you having uh, this opt-in system, having an opt-in box on your site, giving away a compelling item with a great title, getting them on your list, building a relationship. Now, if you want to know how to build a relationship, that's by sending out emails and helping people. Be who you are. Talk, uh, you, know, you know, just like you would talk to a friend. Uh, don't do emails out that's always trying to pitch something or hype something or whatever. Be who you are. Talk about what you're doing just as you would try to develop a relationship. I try to compare this to the way you would act if you moved into a new community and you were trying to make friends with your neighbors. You wouldn't put a billboard up on your sign that was on your house that was flashing that said, hey, come over here and I'm an author. Buy a book from me. You wouldn't do that, right? So don't do it on the internet either. The way you do it is you, you know, 
you walk next door, you knock on the door and you say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm your new neighbor, I baked some cookies for you, okay? Or you lean over the fence and you say, hey, you need to borrow my lawnmower, you know, no problem. I mean, you do things like that, you know? You talk to people that are out walking their dog, you build a relationship. You need to treat relationship building online exactly the way you would do it offline and then it'll work. Absolutely, it's all about building those relationships and building them long term. So you're not just trying to sell everybody everything but if you can actually help your list, you know, help your email list, help educate people, you know, if you're a nonfiction author, give them more video trains, give them something to take their learning and education that they got from your books to an even higher level. Or, you know, yes. if you're a fiction author, maybe you just entertain them, give them like an entertaining video or stories about your life or stories that, you know, you've written but aren't even been published yet. You know, oh, absolutely. Special stuff. A absolutely. Also, um, poll or ask your uh, audience in your list, you know, tell them, I'm working on this book, uh, you know, do you have ideas for this, you know, talk to them about the title, talk to them about the uh, content, stuff like that. What happens when you engage an audience is you will end up getting people, I, I call them evangelists, they will become evangelists for you and they'll feel like they are part of your book or your project. And then when you finally do release it, you know, they feel as if though a little bit of them is in it. If you want to look, I mean, if you take this to the extreme, if you look at the success of the uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul series, right. you know, I know Jack Canfield, he was in The Secret, uh, and, and I have even did a fair amount of consulting for him. But these were books where Jack really wrote hardly anything. He basically asked people, share your stories with me, I will put them in the book, and then we'll put them out in the marketplace. And he ended up doing just, I don't know how many, probably 30, if not 100 of these books, chicken soup, he's got chicken soup for everything. But it was really just the fact that people were sharing stories, he put them in the book, and then what happened is the people that were in the books who wrote the stories became part of the marketing arm of this you know so you can do you don't have to put people's stories in your books but what I'm saying is you can get you know what do you think about me writing about this or, or how should I go here or whatever you know try to involve them in it and it's kind of almost like crowdsourcing a book but it's still your book but it gets people interested in what you're doing mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely so what about after you build your list I mean I know that's the big thing to set up and I also know it's important that people need to understand this is a long-term strategy. It's not like you start building an email list today and, you know, two months from now you have a million sales, right? I mean, it takes a long time to build relationships. But how well, do you go about getting that traffic to build the list in the first place? Uh, good question. Uh, and, and by the way, um, it is a long-term process, but you can do unbelievable things in what still you would think are a relatively short period of time. If you look at what we did with The Secret, there was a six month period of time where we built lists and uh, did our networking and marketing and all the strategy for that and within 17 months we were well over 200 million dollars in sales. So you can do a lot in a relatively short period of time. That was 17 months, okay? Uh, so so it, the spectrum of possibility is unbelievable. But to answer your question, which has to do with how do you drive traffic, there are lots of ways, okay? And I want to, because I can't go into detail of all the various ways, I want to share with you a concept which will uh, enable you to drive traffic across the board any place you want to want to go. And there's actually uh, uh, kind of two different areas here, okay? One that I want to touch upon first is a site that you can go to that will help you with an area that's known as SEO, okay? You can do search engine optimization, that is uh, certain special things that you do on page with your site or your blog and also through external links and social media. You can do certain things that will help to move your site up the ranks of, of search engine. Uh, the best way for an author to do this is go to a site called Brand Yourself, brandyourself.com. This is an extraordinary site built by uh, a team that are, they're quite expert in SEO. But the goal of the site was to build kind of a do-it-yourself with us strategy so that we can work together to move your site up in SEO without you spending any money whatsoever and kind of teach you what you need to do as we do it. So it's kind of a, 
a learn as you do it strategy. Now, what's really neat about Brand Yourself is you go there, you sign up, and they will let you run three URLs through their platform. They will try to get you to sign up for more URLs, but I want to tell you a secret here. Just get three URLs up the ranks and you're going to be sitting pretty. And so pick the three most important URLs you have. Perhaps your blog, perhaps uh, your website, the, the home page of your website, and perhaps a landing page of some sort, maybe uh, the page that you're using uh, to build your list. And let those be your three primary pages, or just pick the three most important pages and work those through the system. I don't need to tell you much because the system is built so well. You'll go there, you'll set up, you'll enter in those three, and then they're going to say, okay, you need to do this, you need to do this. And if you will just do every single thing that they tell you, you will save literally thousands of dollars, you will improve the ranking on those three, and you're going to learn that whole process of SEO. SEO has changed over the years. It used to be all about keywords on pages, and then it went through a phase where it was about links that went to your site, and now it's in this area where it also has a lot to do with social media. Uh, rather than try to figure it all out, go to brand yourself. That's probably going to be good enough for you as an author to really help you in a big way with your marketing. Now, the other side of traffic is, I can best explain it through um, a fishing analogy. The way I look at the internet is that there are a lot of fishing holes out there. We can go and fish at YouTube, we can go and fish at Facebook, we can fish for customers and prospects and clients at Pinterest or LinkedIn. The list goes on. There's all types of places to fish online. So what you have to do is put on your fishing hat and begin to think, how do I fish in each of these holes? What is the type of fish that's swimming there? And what's the best bait? Now this may sound super silly simple, but this is really at the base of learning how to drive traffic. This is what you have to do. If you're going to fish at YouTube, the bait is obviously going to be some type of video, right? If you're going to fish at Pinterest, over there they have really interesting images that are posted on topical boards. So you're going to create boards over there that would have really interesting pictures. The bait there would be pictures. If you're going to fish on Twitter, you've got to come up with really interesting 140 character sentences or quotes or information. All right, And I'll share a really great idea for authors on Twitter in a minute. Don't let me forget. Okay, but you're going to go to each of these areas and you just have to first do this step. You want to look around at other people that are doing things similar to what you're doing. If you're an author, you want to look around on, let's say we're at Pinterest. Let's do Pinterest. Okay, if you're, you're going to go over to Pinterest and you're going to look around and do searches for authors. Maybe you can use, you do searches for the words books and authors. Maybe there's certain authors' names that you know. Search and, and really look and study what they're doing. Because you, on, online what's so cool is you very seldom have to figure it out yourself. You find someone else that's doing what you want to do and, and appear to be having success at it, and then you use that as the seed or the germ of an idea for how you're going to do your own. And that's really the way I learned almost everything. So you go over there and you observe and you begin to understand what others are doing. The second thing that you do is you want to understand what's the nature of this fishing hole. In other words, what's the nature of the community? You know, because you don't want to do stuff that's going to turn people off. It's back to the old analogy I told earlier about you're moving into a neighborhood. You're moving into this world of Pinterest and you want to make sure that you're a good uh, citizen or netizen, as they, they would say online, and you want to abide by all the rules. The next thing you do, and this is the biggest tip I can give you, it sounds crazy stupid, but this is where I learned everything. Every site has a couple of buttons that most people don't click, and if you click these buttons, they'll hand over the secrets. They will tell you what you need to do in order to maximize the effect of your effectiveness on that system. The buttons are generally called things like help, support, and FAQ. Sometimes it'll be tutorial. I don't know what it is about people, but they don't click it. They keep waiting for somebody to create a darn course that you can pay money for. Well, heck, 
Who knows Pinterest better than Pinterest? They want you to be successful on Pinterest. They're going to tell you everything they can think of in order for you to really do well there because that's that's helps them to be successful. So if you go into help, read the frickin' FAQ. They're boring as hell, but they will help you to understand. And I think that's why I know these systems better than other people is because I just read the FAQs. Now, I don't sit there and study them like, uh, you know, I'm going to pass a test. I'll skim through the FAQ, make sure I've got a good feel for it. And then later, I'm trying to do something on the site and can't figure it out. I go, oh, you know, I remember seeing something about that over in the FAQ, and I'll pop over there. I'll watch their videos. I'll do all of that. Do all of that stuff first before you go spend money and sign up for courses. Courses are great. I'm not saying you should do it, but first take what's free and do do the best you can. Okay, so we've looked at our competition, we've looked at other people, we've read the FAQs, looked at all the tutorials, okay? Now we have to put on our creative mind and start thinking, I'm going fishing in this hole and I want to have the best bait there is. So if you're on Pinterest, you're going to create images of things. And a strategy that's really good at um, Pinterest, and you would do something similar to this on all sites, or all fishing holes, is you, you create stuff that will attract the kind of audience that you're looking for. So let's say you wrote a book about uh, a cookbook, just for an example. You would create a board that's all about you and your cookbook, but then you would create a board that is about baking and a board that's about desserts and a board that is about uh, you know salads and and you know all of these related things it's almost like you're thinking well what are all the keywords that are related to my core cookbook here and can I create a bunch of accompanying uh, boards that will increase the likelihood that that my audience the kind of audience I'm looking for will find me here and and so you just start you know creating all of this bait over there and lo and behold People will see the bait, they will like it, and it'll start driving traffic, and the traffic will come to, from Pinterest and straight in. I have had people who use strategies like that who drive literally thousands of hits a day from doing something. Now, that's Pinterest. Now, you go over and you do the same thing at YouTube. You create videos there and surround it with uh, you know, videos, lots of videos that are always addressing the kind of audience that you want to find, and then you go to uh, Twitter, and I didn't forget, so you don't have to remind me. Twitter, let me show you how you do this for authors. What you have to do with Twitter is remember that people who follow you on Twitter are really wanting to know more about you. They're kind of wanting to pick your brain. Why else would somebody follow you? Okay, so what you want to do is pre pick your brain for them and create something that I call tweet sets. Now a tweet set is a topical collection of tweets that are prepared ahead of time that can then be put into a scheduler so that you can have high quality content being published out over time and not repeating tweets. So let's say you're doing it with a book. I would take the first chapter of your book and go through that chapter and find 10 140 character great uh, clips from that first chapter. I'd find 10 from the second chapter and 10 from the third chapter. If you had a 10 chapter book, then you would have a hundred tweets in your tweet set. You can take those, you can put them into a scheduler. Uh, I happen to use uh, social oomph, uh, which is the worst name I've ever thought of for a because you can't spell it, but social oomph. That's not a free system. Uh, I have a training program in, in, in Zero Cost Marketing Secrets that, that has a bunch of them in there. I can't remember, but there, there's a couple of free ones you can get to. But you want to find a scheduler. You put it in there, and you set it so that it will tweet uh, you know, infrequently, and frequently enough so that you've got stuff going in your timeline, but you want to spread it out. Here's what I generally do. I create sets of tweets that are a minimum of about 50 or 55 tweets. I set them up so that they will tweet one a week. That means that my tweets don't repeat for a whole year because there's 52 weeks in a year. And I will create tweets, for example, I'm a marketer, so I have a set of 50 
tweets on blog marketing and 50 tweets on uh, SEO and 50 tweets on driving traffic and 50 tweets on I, every kind of marketing you can think of I have 50 tweets and I run those things so that they publish once every week that means that I don't have to sit there tweeting all day because it's 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 automated now you can't totally automate social media there has to be human interaction so don't think that this is a replacement for human interaction what this is is to fill the gaps in between your human interaction and make sure that it's high quality stuff that's not being repeated and that way people love it because they're they every time they look at your Twitter uh, timeline they're getting something that's of high value something they haven't seen before because you're not repeating and it's stuff that's coming either out of your book or out of your your brain or what have you and there is an incredible side benefit to this you you will learn stuff like crazy by doing this in other words think about it if you're gonna think about this if you were gonna write a book on a topic and, and, and you felt like you do a fair amount about it but you, you you knew you could learn more what if all of a sudden you challenged yourself to write 50 tweets about all of these different things you find yourself online researching the topic just in order to create all of these tweets I learned a lot of the marketing that I know people often ask me how do you know all of this stuff and remember it I created tweet sets I created just literally thousands and thousands of tweet sets sometimes I'll never forget I, I didn't know much about outsourcing and I say, well, you know, I think I'm going to do one on outsourcing. And so I spent like several days researching, reading articles and all of this about outsourcing so that I could create a tweet set. And by the time I was done, I knew a lot about outsourcing. And now guess what? I read my own timeline because a lot of times I can't remember some of the stuff that I actually wrote, you know, locked out. I read my own timeline and, it, and, and these tweets are really interesting. So it's kind of a reminder. So I just love doing tweet sets. And I think it's a great thing for authors. Uh, you can certainly take your book and, and at the end of the day here's the thing that's interesting you never know what line it is in your book that's going to turn a potential uh, customer on it may be you know line 32 uh, in chapter 3 or line number you know 72 in chapter number 10 who knows what it's going to be but that one line may be just what turns them on and causes them to buy the book and just so you know you do put links in some of your tweets but you don't have to put a link on every tweet I would say if you put a maybe 20 percent of your uh, uh, tweets could have links and that could be a link to where they buy the book it be it could be a link to uh, your opt-in that you set up earlier to, in order to build a list it could be a link to to whatever and you should have various links and it does take a little time to put all this together but guess what you have created a traffic engine let me give you one more idea on this what about blogging you, you should be blogging and and here's how you tie it in there are people that post let's say you do a blog post twice a week you know so you do it and you do it and you do it okay well what you want to do is some people they will tweet the title of their blog post they'll tweet it one time and it's over that's crazy because it won't really help you that much what you want to do is every time you bother to write a blog post grab two or three really great points out of that blog post and add that to your tweet set so it becomes just a part of the way you do this every time you write a blog post you grab three great tweets out of it and you put them into your tweet set set and that gets scheduled and runs and what you will find is that you will start having traffic to your old blog post as much as your new blog post because the tweet the tweets that are going out will will just constantly regenerate traffic over and over and over again it is a much better way to use Twitter than most people do and um, can't say enough about it so anyway fish go fish learn how, you know learn the fishing hole learn the kind of fish learn the kind of bait they want and then then it's just a matter of, of thinking of all the places that you can go fishing you should be fishing at Amazon okay especially for an author you should be fishing at Amazon definitely well I love what you just said about you know taking your your tweet sets and, and sending them out and, and it's also about you know repurposing content because oh, you yeah. can take that one blog post and you can turn that into say 10 tweets that's and correct. then you can take that one blog post and you can turn it into a, a video for YouTube that's and then correct. you can take that same post and turn it into 10 quotes to put in images to post on Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram you right? got it that's just one 500 word blog post imagine what you can do 
or something like this, like an hour long interview. I mean, we could have dozens and dozens of tweets and all kinds of quotes and, you know, a whole book come out of this, you know, low cost marketing strategies. And then we could have, you know, five blog posts on different low cost marketing strategies, one for Twitter, one for Pinterest, et cetera. So, you know, most people say, well, I don't have enough ideas um, for more books. <laughs> I don't have enough marketing ideas, but like, you're just not thinking about how you can use the ideas you already have and just expand upon them. And the reason it's so important is number one, you're going to get more exposure, but number two, you're going to reach different customers, right? Because every pond has these different fish in it. And, yes. you know, not everyone's going to respond to, you know, a 140 character tweet on Twitter. Some people right. will, but some people want video and some people want a big article and some people want images. So when you give your audience everything that they might possibly want and, and really deepen that knowledge and that deepen that education, that, that connection with them, that's why some people with the same information you have are selling 10, 100, 1,000 times more because they're more effectively fishing, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, one of the strategies I often use uh, that's related to what we're talking about is breaking a product down into its incremental parts. And so when you take a book and you break the chapters down into to literally selected sentences here and there. In other words, don't tweet your whole book, you know, that's crazy. But you're picking out just the, the best of the best in each chapter. You're breaking it down in, in, in its parts. Uh, you know, I, I know we're talking to authors here, but sometimes you understand strategies better when you take it out of the field. And so let, let me give you a, an example. You know, I tell real estate agents, you know, if you want to know what to tweet, as soon as you list a house, Go in the house and write 10 tweets about the living room and 10 tweets about the kitchen and 10 tweets about the backyard and 10 tweets and tweet, you know, 50 or 100 different tweets because you never know what it is in that house that's going to turn a person on. Same thing with a book author. Uh, I have a, a client that's marketing a product. It's called Body Glow and it helps you. Uh, it's a superfood. And what I did with that is I broke down the ingredients. It has like 70 different fruits and vegetables in it. So I've got a Pinterest board that has apples on it and oranges and bananas and in other words I'm breaking down all of the ingredients so that uh, I can expose I mean somebody may be just nuts about bananas and, and they get over there and they start looking at that and they end up uh, you know liking the product so whatever you do break it down to these incremental parts and you're correct Tom you can you're it's really repurposing there is never a lack of opportunities, so you just go into, you know, YouTube is videos, and you know, uh, Facebook's a blend of things. You can do a lot over there. Uh, Twitter is, is text mostly. Uh, and, and just figure out what works in each of these areas, and, and then boom, you're, you're all set. And get you a scheduler that will let you schedule these things um, uh, into your Twitter timeline. And you can have a, a Twitter account for each book. Or you can have just a Twitter account for you as an, an author, uh, or both. I would really recommend that you do both uh, because a book is has enough content in it uh, to, to be worthy of its own account. Uh, there's no reason not to do that. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. And, and you're so right about that because, you know, there's so much that you can do with your content, with your information. And, you know, it's not about coming up with more ideas or a whole other book. I mean, just the one book you have chances are you've got enough opportunities with just that one book to keep you busy for the next year, right? That's it's right. just about, you know, fishing wisely with the material that you already have. Sometimes you try to chase the next opportunity or the next idea, but sometimes it's just about staying where you are with the idea that you have and just fishing really well, just keep pounding it out. That, that's correct. Now, what will happen, th one of my biggest challenges really is that I, I have too many things I can think up to do. And uh, many times a good idea come along and I'll just forget about it. Another really great tool I use all the time uh, is called Nudge Mail, N-U-D-G-E, Nudge Mail. And what I like about Nudge Mail, is, it's a, it's, and this is free as well, is that it is a simple system to remind you to do things uh, that you're likely going to forget. But instead of it being calendar-based, I always have a problem. It's like, okay, uh, I, I'm supposed to, uh, you know, do something next Thursday, or uh, I really need to, uh, you know, create a tweet set for uh, the third chapter in my book. I know I need to do it, but what I, what what gets me is that I hate going into a calendar and entering it in as a calendar reminder. So the way Nudge Mail works is that you send yourself an email. You just send an email, like you'll say, next Monday at nudgemail.com. You send it 
out. And, and whatever you send out to it, it's going to send it back to you next Monday. Or you could say uh, monthly, or you could say weekly, or you could say daily at nudgemail.com. In other words, the email address that you send it to basically is telling their system when they need to remind you. And I use this all the time. I'll be out and about. I'll be grocery shopping, and I'll come up with, I'll think, oh, here's a great idea, or oh, I need to call so-and-so back, or whatever. You know how it is. And I just pull out my phone, and I'll send an email, and it'll say, you know, Tuesday at nudgemail.com. I send that off, and, and I'll just type in a subject line, call Tom. You know, something like that. Incredible system. I, I almost overuse this system because I, and I love to read my emails every day because it's, it's, it's reminders coming in telling me of things that I need to do. And if you don't want to deal with it, you can push it off uh, or you can uh, eliminate it. But uh, just go over there and when you get there, click, uh, there's a link or a little graphic that says how to use nudge mail. Just click that, the how to, read through it and within about 10 minutes, you're going to understand how that works, and you will stop forgetting all of the great things that you really want to do. Uh, and it works for me. If you like calendar system, that's fine, but this, this free system works for me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's great, and that's so important. I mean, I always talk about carrying a notebook with me to capture yeah. ideas because as an artist, as an author, as a creative person, you know, all the value that you have in the world comes from your ideas. Obviously, you have to execute those ideas and implement them. But if you don't even capture them in the first place, it's really hard to implement something you forget. Exactly. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Dan. I really, really appreciate it. You shared some amazing information with us. Uh, before you go, tell us about where we can find more information about you and the work that you're doing. Well, you know, I'm not really here to sell anything today. I've got a free course. Uh, since we've talked a lot about zero stuff, I've got a free course that, that kind of mm -hmm digs deeper into the zero cost marketing strategies that, uh, that I've shared some with you today. It's over at Udemy. Uh, the quickest way to get it uh, is just to go to EZ, the letter E, the letter Z, dot com forward slash Udemy. That's U-D-E-M-Y. So EZ.com forward slash Udemy. And uh, it's a free course. It is very robust uh, and, and it really walks you through uh, some of the things we talked about today, but how to build a list, uh, how to do marketing and, and all of this stuff. Uh, and I think that would be a, a good place for people to go because uh, here's, here's my whole feeling about marketing. If you can figure a way to do it without wasting money, that's just more money in your pocket and it's more things that you can do. Uh, and don't think that just because something is free that it's not high quality. There is a business model now online which is called the premium, I'm sorry, freemium business model and companies like Facebook and Google, they use it. We don't spend money with Google and Facebook uh, in most instances and we use them all day and all night and those companies are making billions of dollars. They're, they're running a freemium business model whereby they give away premium services knowing that a few people will end up paying or they'll have uh, ad revenue and that's the reason this works. So you're getting premium stuff out there if you just look for it. So in my Zero Cost Marketing Secrets program over at Udemy, I basically introduce this to you and kind of get rid of the, the there's an idea in people's minds that if it's free there's got to be a catch. You know, your grandmother always said you can't have your cake and eat it too and all that kind of stuff. So I get that out of your head and then get you to thinking about ways that you can do things inexpensively. Then when you do spend money, and occasionally you'll need to, you'll be spending it on things uh, that, uh, they're, that, that are really important to you. So uh, easy.com forward slash Udemy, that'll be a good place to go. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Tom. And thanks, everyone, for joining today. It was a real pleasure. Awesome, man. Great job.